Hello and welcome to Colour Modern Media Enterprises. My name is Luke, also known as Tianru, and we are going to continue with Story Love 2, which is going to be, of course, a series of, um, I wouldn't say tutorials, it's basically just me developing a, an interactive story engine that you will eventually be able, to, where you will be able to create your own interactive stories, either text-based or visual novels. So, without further ado, let's continue. So, if you remember from last time, we have our dialogue class, our conversation, and our main, which creates a conversation. We load it in and we set some dialogue text. And before I continue, what I would like to show you is something on the OpenFL forums which I have posted. So if you did not already know, StoryDev2 is of course a going to be an interactive story engine. Um, it is sort of a sequel to the original obviously a complete overhaul of it the sequel is on github at the moment so let's go over to github and i will even show you so i'll go to my profile story dev engine this is the engine of the original which is open source and free it also has an editor as well that you can also choose to use um, which obviously as you can probably tell I have not edited edited this in ages because there is no link to the editor <laughs> which is silly absolutely silly the editor by the way is actually just under the name of story dev um, so if we scroll down in my repositories down here this is story dev it is a WinForms application um, which means it is only available on Windows. And you would need to install a variety of other libraries that um, StoryDev relies on, msignal and hscript. But today is about StoryDev2. This is the conversation and dialogue, and we are going to continue with this. Okay, so. Let's, first of all, open and take a look at what it originally looked like. So, carrying on, carrying on from yesterday, this is what it looked like. It's not much, it's just a box with a bit of text in it. The first thing that I want to do first is go back into my XML file and edit this and add in my library again. The reason why is because I have now fixed the text control that was bugging me because of legacy not being not working for whatever reason. Um, So now I'm going to get what I'm going to do is go back into dialogue and I am going to import that text control back in. So now I am going to instead use that. And it means that we will be using less text this time which is a lot easier on the eyes definitely for sure i've written games in the past where it just looks horrible you'll take a look at the source code i mean just take a look at the source code of the story dev that there is so much goddamn code and most of it's just boilerplate it is absolutely goddamn ridiculous i Hate OpenFL for that reason. Uh, I have a love and ha I have a love hate relationship with OpenFL. Um, so 
I need to get styles, t uh, font style, like that. There we go. So we need to use that. Default, oops. And we are embedding a font. Okay. So that, so now we should be able to build it and it should still work. So let's take a look. Let's lib run openfl build project.xml Nico dash d legacy. There is a new version of OpenFL today, I believe. Or oh, it was released yesterday, 3.3.5. Maybe that will fix a few things. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I thought I fixed it. Mixlib dev open FL. No, 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 not in this directory. Uh, it's in here. Let's. Maybe command prompt here. Mixlib dev open FL. Open FL dash GY. There. What do you mean development directory of this label? This should be enabled. Takes the dev dev open FL dash GY. Okay. Seriously? Do you have to be that annoying? There we go. Right. So now it should work. Story dev. Yeah. Why? Why is it still looking at that version for? I just set hxlib list. See, this is why hxlib needs fixing. It is as simple as that. Um, OpenFL dash gy. I. I don't even know anymore. <laughs> don't. I don't. Why? 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 Why do you have to annoy me for? Seriously. <sighs> Clearly, it just wants to piss me off. Send to zip. Open FL dash GY. I'm just going to install that just to make life a bit easier. CD openfl gy hxlib install openfl gy zip. Right. Are you going to stop complaining now? No, it's not stopped complaining yet. Text control should be text fields. That's why. Just need to quickly change that around and then we will be good to go. We can get rid of that text field now. So I apologize for that little bit of a rant there and wasting time sorting out libraries. There we go. So now when we take a look our build it should still be the same as before wait what oh. <laughs> why <laughs> okay what was that output that's not gonna work is it Hmm. 
make that test projects dash d legacy and I'll be able to actually see what's going on what the problem was invalid field access font name there is no font assets with an ID of open sans regular dash ttf oh <laughs> Of course, of course. Okay. Now it should work. <laughs> okay. There we go. Right. So it's almost the same, only the text isn't white. <laughs> uh, so we'll uh, just quickly change that to text color is equal to zero times f f f f f f which is going to be white okay we're getting somewhere sort of not really okay so that was about 10 minutes of um not really getting very far so now hopefully we will actually get something done um so the next thing that I want to implement is the ability to obviously make the dialogue a bit more interactive. So obviously for every conversation that we have we are going to be able to go from one text or one dialogue to another by clicking on the screen or touching it in order to get from one dialogue to another. Yeah. So in order to do that we need to add an event listener to the conversation itself right because the conversation is going to be the main meat of everything so i'm just going to say add event listener which is going to be a mouse event actually not a, not a, not just a normal event so that is going to be a mouse event like that and that is going to be a mouse event which is going to be click so on mouse click which is going to be a variable somewhere on the screen i am going to function even or variable so this is going to be a private function on mouse click and when we click on within the bounds of the conversation we want to go from one dialogue to another but obviously we don't have that yet so what i want to do is with every single conversation i want to be able to load a json file um, that will load a series of dialogues and when we click on it we go from one index one index in the array to another so all we're doing essentially is uh, clicking on the dialogue we click on the conversation we go on to the next dialogue so what i'm going to do is yeah i want to import openfl assets like that assets and I also want to import hex.json so that we can actually parse some JSON when we load it in. So what I want to do first is create a I want to create two things. So first of all I want to create a private variable which is going to be a series of dialogues. So that is going to be an array of um dialogue information so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into here and i am going to go to yeah class dialogue info it's just going to be a basic class it's not going to be anything fancy so in here i'm just going to put public var text string literally all we need for now just for testing reasons 
Um, so now we've got dialog info, and we need to initialize that first because obviously it wouldn't work in Nico otherwise. So dialogs is equal to nothing to start with, and what I now want to do is create a public property that will allow us to set that dialogs set up that. So. First of all, what I want to do is create another private variable before I decide to go to and do that. So I'm going to say underscore anything. And the reason why is because we do not want to load, because what this property is going to do is it's when we set it, it's going to find the uh, file that we set it to, and then it's going to load the very first dialog and put it as text into this dialog text variable here and if the state and if this conversation hasn't been edited then we end up in the state where it will just crash so what I want to do is Add a folder, which is going to which is going to be info. I'm going to need to include that <coughs> assets path is equal to assets info like that. Rename to info. Save and that should be fine. Okay, so now what I want to do is create a variable, a property even. What what should I call it? Hmm. Something meaningful, obviously. Okay, sorry about that uh, interruption. So, yeah, as I was mentioning uh, before. Uh, was a while back, obviously, considering. Um, so we're going to take a conversation file, and that is going to be a string like that. And when we set it, what we want to do is we want to just um, so we want to make sure that if we haven't edited. We want to not do anything until we have edited. So, if we haven't edited, then we want to. Hmm, how do we do this? We want to. We want basically a boolean to say that we that we've got a file to load, right? So we're just gonna say, um, file needed, right? Let's just call it file needed. So when we set it, we are going to, first of all, We're just going to set the conversation file first. So let's just set it and return for the time being. Right. And we are going to say file needed is equal to true. So after we've edited, what we want to do is we want to say if file needed, then we are going to reset it back to the conversation so that it actually goes through and actually does what we want it to do, what we want it to do when I can eventually start speaking again. So now what we want to do is load the JSON from an asset. So what I'm going to do is var data is equal to json dot parse eventually 
and we are going to get text from a file which is of course going to be the value that we pass in once we once once we've done that what we want to do is for each info in data then we want to simply just create a dialog info and then put it into dialogs right so var di for dialog info dialog info is equal to new dialog info and the di dot text is just going to simply be info dot text right actually that's not going to work dot length the reason it's not going to work is because this a needs to be dynamic and b um, that's not how JSON works so that actually needs to be data info like that and then once we've done that we are going to say dialogs not push is equal is going to be di so once we've done that what we want to then do is just load the first index so that is going to be dialog text uh, so dialog text is equal to dialogs zero like that dot text so now what we want to do is um, create a pr another private function and that is going to be go to dialog right because we want to be able to go from one index to another so I'm going to say index int right and all I'm going to do here is say dialog text is equal to dialogs index dot text so when we click what we want to do is we want to basically get the next one in the array so private var uh, current dialog index which is going to be an int and down here so first of all we need to set that so we'll set in here actually current dialog index is equal to zero so when we click we are going to say current dialog index plus plus and then we are going to do go to dialog which is going to be current dialog index like that all right so now that we've got that let's test it so we have created a new dialog in our main so now what we want to do is load a file so this is going to be a conversation file we want to set that to a file um, which is going to be an info somewhere so obviously it'll probably be a good idea that we actually create that file first um, so let's not a php file a txt file to start with um, so in this file we are going to put in dialogs it's going to be json anyway so we might as well just say it like that dialogs.json it's going to be an array and within that we are going to have a variety of variables so the first one is going to be text as you can probably imagine uh, this is some text uh, let's put in another one and now that I think about it we actually need to check to see if we can actually go to that index first before we decide to do that so what we want to do is if dialogs.length or rather if the index is less than dialogs.length minus one then do that because otherwise if we try to set it to something that's out of range then it's going to cause the uh, program to crash which is not something that we want so this is going to be dialogs.text dot json here 
Let's put in some more values. So in here, oops, I am going to say, I don't know, how are you? Can you not do that, Flash Develop, please? Thank you. And a, another one, it is going to be. Um, I am fine. Something like that. All right. So let's test that. Sorry. It's just going to be a bit basic for the time being. Obviously. Now the reason I'm using legacy is because there's currently a few problems with the latest open FL. Um, the problems may have been resolved. Um, okay, so now when we click, we can go on to the next one. Oh. Probably won't do that. So yeah, so now when we try to click any further, it just doesn't do anything. Okay, so that now works. We can go on to the next one, and that is fine. But that's not, it's not really the best way to do it. And the reason why is because we want to be able to specify, okay, what, let's say ID we want to go to. So we could have an ID value here, which is going to be zero, right? And another one here, which is going to be one. But what if we want to go to, let's say four, for example, maybe the next one's four. So what I'm going to do now is provide next in here like that. And that is going to be one. Uh, And the next for this one is going to be four, right? And that makes sense. So in our dialog info, when it eventually loads, I am going to put in two new variables, public var int, public var id int, and then public var uh, next int, like that. And in here, what I want to do is, instead of using current dialog index, so we remove that. And now what we do is use instead the next variable within the next. So the next variable of the dialog index that we have. So in order to do that, what we want to do is we want to um, go to, it should be more like go to next dialog. So go to next dialog like this. And we will So instead of having this, it will be more like that, like that. So now what we want to do is instead of checking for indexes and stuff like that, we would check what our current dialog info actually is. So what's the best way to do this? So what we could do is we could get a reference to the dialog info that we are currently viewing, which is probably the best way to do it. So what we could do is private var current dialog info. Is going to be a dialog info like that. 
let me say current dialog info is going to be equal to dialog zero. And instead of doing that, what we do is we just simply do um, dialog text is equal to current dialog info. current dialog info dot and it eventually once it loads dot text there we go all right so now what I want to do is when we go and click we want to simply say uh, current dialog info is equal to dialogues right so we want to get the next ID um, so yeah we would have to iterate through it first so we'll do for I in zero dot 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 dialogues dot length and then we check to see what the next ID is so we want to first of all grab the ID for ID is equal to current dialog info dot ID and we're going to say if dialogs I dot ID is equal to ID and if that is the case then no next is that right No, 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 no. We want to get dot next like that. And if the ID is equal to the ID of the current dialog next, then we want to say current dialog info is equal to dialogs I like that. And it might actually be a good idea that we break out of that once we have set that. Okay. So now, now that we've got that, we can then simply just load the next dialog text by doing this current dialog info dot text. Of course, if there is no next value, we'd have to check to see that. So, if current dialog info dot next is equal to minus one, let's say so that's let's say that's the default value, um, then we shall just return. So, we probably want to make sure that next is equal to minus one because that's the default. Um, because when we load the conversation we want to check to see if that next is actually there um, we can do di.next is equal to data info dot next if that next is not there it's just going to leave it alone it doesn't assign it with anything right because that is the way that works I believe but we'll find out soon if I am wrong <laughs> okay so let's load that and see what happens oh. no. it's supposed to be an underscore there all right some text click how are you click I'm fine okay so we're not getting any runtime errors it's not crashing so that's all good okay awesome we are getting further along the path of righteousness <laughs> no. um, so now that we've got that sorted Wait, 
Did I just do something? We've got a four info in. What? Oh. Oops. <laughs> oh. I honestly thought I removed the force loop. I just clicked that expand and collapse. God damn it. Idiot. Right. <laughs> Right. Uh, I hate it when ideas do that. Just silently collapse something. Hang on a minute, what? Okay. Now, right, so now let's put this uh, dialog box into an appropriate place. Um, oops, no, don't do that. <laughs> I actually did know what happened there. Um, okay, so. Let's put this dialog box into an appropriate place. So let's go back to our main. We are going to say that, yeah, so let's keep it, in fact, let's make it 400 by 300. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say convo.ax is equal to, in fact, I'll do it here. Why is it doing that for? Convo.ax equal to stage dot stage width divided by two minus convo dot width divided by two so essentially we're just gonna center it in, in the screen and it, let, let's keep the y the same so we'll keep the y at zero so now it will be centered in the screen. Oh, I did that again, did I? Mm. Let's not do that. Uh, wait, what? That's not quite the middle. Oh, of course. It doesn't quite calculate it like that because we're using graphics. Um, if you see down here, we've got graphics dot draw regs actual width actual height. Um, should probably go by that. It'd probably be easier. So. What we will do. is say oops private uh, conversation width private var conversation height like like that and we will set those values up so Conversation width is going to be 400. Conversation height is going to be 300. That is going to be conversation width, and that is going to be conversation height. Okay, and then instead of going doing convo dot width, we do conversation width. That should now work better. Let's now test that. Yes, it does. All right, cool. As you can see, it doesn't quite um, load the way that you would expect. I it doesn't resize or um, scale depending on the size of the screen. So, next thing to do, I think, is to fix that bit so 
every time we resize. So let's add an event listener to here. Event dot resize on the resize. Let's create that function. Private function on the resize. What I want to do is check to see if the um, I want to check to see if it has been inserted or not, and it will be inserted once we've loaded. In fact, let's not do it here. Let's do it in here. So if not inserted, because when we when we load it, when we launch the application, to start with what it will do is it will actually call the resize event because it will resize the window by default. And then if it's not, then we can actually do some resize operations. Which in this case, all we're really going to do is just reset the value of x to make sure that it state to make sure that it remains in the center of the screen so now when we build it we will when we resize it oh uh, what's I did put that there, right? You did see me do that, right? <laughs> Why is it? Why is it not? Setting the value correctly. Interesting. Maybe it needs to be set to the stage and not probably the reason why. Oh, we can't do that, can we? Or, or can we? Well, apparently we can. Um, Okay, let's save this. Apparently it's saved. I doubt that. Okay, let's try it again. Otherwise, if it doesn't work, I really don't know what's going to happen. Oh, wait. <laughs> and it says it's going to be false. Sorry. Like that. Will that now work? No. Interesting. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. But anyway, I'm going to leave that for the time being. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And 